seems to be in a race. Whether if it's a 60 meter sprint, a 10 kilometer marathon, or just a light jog in the morning, we're constantly in a competition. This could be for money, for education, or friendship. We're all fighting for something. But the answer is, how? How do we win? I have a close friend that's an INTJ. Someone, an architect personality type. So, someone that's really well organized, planned, and always makes sure that they do something before it's submitted. And oftentimes, I compare, I compare myself to her. To me, she's someone that seems to be perfect. Straight A's, or why not? And I often wonder, in order for me to become someone like her, would I also need to be the same? Would I also need to have the same trade-offs? See, I'm someone that's an ENTP, so I'm oftentimes very extroverted, might not be the most focused on tasks, and do a lot of talking, as I'm currently doing. So, under this, we all have to make trade-offs. A lot of the times, I spend time at like social gatherings or participating in events that probably won't benefit me so much when I'm having a lab report I need to submit by this Thursday. So, how? How do we reach an equilibrium, a balance? I once saw this meme before at school that we can only get two out of three things. Good grades, social life, or sleep. My favorite. So oftentimes, when we can't even balance just one, it's a constant dilemma to balance all three. And oftentimes, you might be, instead of studying, you might be doing fun and having sleep, or vice versa, depending on the three different options. So I conducted a survey at my school because I wanted to do, I wanted to know how our students were doing. And I wanted to know what, like what challenges we were having, how they were balancing, and some questions about that. And this was my results. For th the top one was health, with 39%. Which is really important, because people taking care of their physical and psychological needs is really important, and for them to have a long-term balance of life. Well, the prerequisite is to be alive. And the next one was academics, with 33%. I mean, it's basis, so everyone's really nerdy, so it's not really surprising. And then we have 28% of entertainment. This is more of the shallow parts of the research, because this is just what people will prioritize. It's not much. But then I also wanted to ask on the actuality of balancing their lives versus what they projected to balance their lives. And this had some interesting results. So from this, the first question was, do you think it is possible to balance all three factors? The significant high percentage of 71% answered yes. But what was the great disparity with the results was that the second question of people asking, do they think that they themselves are able to balance all three, the percentage went down to 43%. And this speaks a lot about people's self-ideals, self-confidence, and a growth mindset. Because people said to send, tend to have a greater optimistic or a greater sense that other people will achieve something that they themselves can't. That seems to be a problem. Because people shouldn't, because as statistically, statistically speaking, people with growth mindsets are more likely to do well than someone that is in a fixed mindset. So how do we achieve that growth mindset? Well, the closest example that I think is whenever we think that we're not enough, we often have someone that we think is, is enough, like a role model, someone that we aspire to, someone that we look up to. And with this, I think it kind of changes over time. Because as we grow up, we're able to see a bigger picture of things. We're able to see, we're able to have a bigger, a wider spectrum of the difficulties and the flaws of every person. So with this in mind, I wanted to ask one of my favorite teachers at school on how he was able to balance so well. Because to me, he was always so optimistic, very upbeat and cheerful, something that I could never do on Monday mornings. I wanted to ask, how was he able to balance so well while the rest of us 
professional like me that probably has three mess assignments I still need to complete by the end of this Thursday is unable to balance. And I wanted to ask him, was it how and why? The answer he gave me was true and blunt. No, I am not. Because the answer that he gave me was that even if he thought he was perfect, or even if he thinks he was, the other stakeholders in his life could say other things. And I thought this was really impactful. Because a lot of the times, we also have to know what other people have to say about us. Whether it's a good or bad way, which can take constructive criticism. Because a lot of the times, your peers or your family could notice things that you aren't. Maybe you're not calling your parents enough. Maybe your grades are slipping. Maybe you're sleeping through class. A lot of times, we might not notice these things that the people around us could. So, why is this title an unbalanced equilibrium? Well, first off, it's an oxymoron. So, when two things are compared, they have different opposite meanings. But it's also a bit paradox, because I like to think that it makes sense. See, I think it's a metaphor towards our lives, because a lot of times, we're unbalanced. Yet, we're at an equilibrium in which we're able to keep on moving. I think it's, a, it's also easier to think of it this way. If you think about a bike, it's easier to stay balanced when you're constantly moving forwards. But if you're trying to balance a bike just at a standing point, you're more likely to fall. So the answer to having a balanced equilibrium is to keep on moving. To have that support to be there, to have that motivation in order for you to continue to go. See, life is like a survival of the fittest. Oftentimes, we're in a competitive workplace, we're in a competitive school, we're all trying to win. And there is no correct formula to life. It's not a math problem. Because if it was, I would have probably failed and will do so and continue to do so. See, in order for us to reach that balance, we have to keep on going. Now, it's your turn. You have to have that choice in finding that balance and finding that support in order to push. It's the same reason that you have with the push that is taking you for that 100-meter sprint. That is all, and thank you.